10 Richest Actors in Old Hollywood History Step back in time to the glamorous golden age of Hollywood, where stars not only lit up the screen, but also amassed incredible fortunes. In this video, we're counting down the 15 richest actors from old Hollywood, showcasing the legends whose talent and charm made them icons of both cinema and wealth. From groundbreaking contracts to savvy investments, these stars reigned supreme in both fame and fortune. Discover the wealthiest actors who helped shape Hollywood's legacy. Greta Garbo Greta Garbo Born as Greta Lovisa Gustafsson in 1905 in Stockholm, Sweden, rose from humble beginnings to become one of Hollywood's most enigmatic and celebrated figures. Her journey to stardom began when she was discovered in her teens by Swedish director Erik Pettersson, and she quickly transitioned from European cinema to the heights of Hollywood fame. Known for her striking beauty and captivating screen presence, Garbo starred in iconic films such as Grand Hotel, Anna Karenina, and Mata Hari, becoming a symbol of the golden age of Hollywood. Her silent film performances, imbued with a sense of mystery and allure, made her a worldwide sensation, and she was among the first actresses to successfully transition to sound films. By the time she was 20, Garbo was one of the highest paid actresses in Hollywood, earning a staggering $270,000 per film in the late 1920s, a figure that, when adjusted for inflation, would be equivalent to millions of dollars today. Her immense popularity and financial success came at a time when the film industry was still in its early stages, making her one of the few women in Hollywood to command such extraordinary salaries. By the time she retired in 1941, at just 36 years old, Garbo had amassed a fortune of over $3 million, which in today's currency would be close to $40 million. Garbo's financial acumen extended beyond her film earnings. She was known for living a modest and private life, avoiding the extravagance often associated with Hollywood celebrities. She invested wisely in stocks, bonds, and federal farm credit bank notes, accumulating an additional $10 million from her investments. Garbo was also an avid art collector, with her collection featuring masterpieces from renowned artists such as Jowlensky, Renoir, Pierre Bonnard, and Christian Berard. This impressive collection, which she kept in her New York City apartment, was valued at a jaw-dropping $19 million at the time of her death. Despite her financial success and public adoration, Greta Garbo remained an intensely private person. She never married, nor did she have children, and her personal life was shrouded in mystery. After her retirement, she led a reclusive life, splitting her time between her homes in New York, France, and Switzerland. Unlike many of her Hollywood contemporaries, Garbo chose to live quietly, staying away from the limelight she once commanded. When she passed away in 1990 at the age of 84, Garbo left behind not only a substantial fortune, but also an enduring legacy as one of Hollywood's greatest and most enigmatic stars. Her life was defined not by the extravagance of wealth, but by her timeless elegance, her talent, and her refusal to conform to the norms of Hollywood celebrity. If you find this video not interesting enough, hit the like button to save it and watch it later. Joan Crawford Joan Crawford, born Lucille Fay Le Sueur in 1904, was one of the most iconic and enduring stars of Hollywood's golden age. Her rise to fame began during the silent film era, and she continued to captivate audiences for decades with her intense performances and strong screen presence. Crawford's career spanned over 80 films, including notable roles in Mildred Pierce, Grand Hotel, and The Women. Her versatility as an actress, combined with her sharp business instincts, allowed her to stay relevant throughout the shifting tides of the film industry, making her one of Hollywood's most successful actresses. Crawford's financial journey mirrored her relentless work ethic. 
In the early days of her career, she earned a modest $75 a week, but her determination to succeed pushed her to the top, where she eventually commanded an impressive $7,000 per week at the peak of her fame. Her breakout moment came with her Oscar-winning performance in Mildred Pierce in 1946, which solidified her status as a leading lady in Hollywood. Crawford's ability to reinvent herself throughout the years, transitioning from silent films to talkies and from ingenue roles to powerful dramatic characters, allowed her to maintain a long-lasting career, resulting in a net worth of over $2 million at the time, equivalent to around $30 million today. Beyond acting, Joan Crawford was a savvy businesswoman who understood the value of negotiating high-paying contracts. Warner Brothers recognized her star power and offered her a groundbreaking three-film deal worth $500,000 in the 1940s. This contract came at a time when her popularity was facing a dip, but Crawford used it as an opportunity to prove her enduring appeal. Her films during this period were not just hits. They were smash successes, with audiences flocking to see her captivating performances. Crawford's business acumen extended to her personal life as well, where she managed her finances with discipline and caution, ensuring her financial stability long after her career waned. While Joan Crawford's career was filled with triumphs, her personal life was tumultuous and often reflected the drama of her on-screen roles. Her adopted children later revealed stories of a strained family life, contributing to the complexity of her public persona. Despite personal controversies, Crawford's legacy as one of the greatest actresses of her time remains intact. She was a trailblazer for women in Hollywood, known for her resilience, talent, and ability to remain relevant in a highly competitive industry. Joan Crawford passed away in 1977 at the age of 73, leaving behind a legacy that continues to inspire and intrigue both fans and critics alike. Audrey Hepburn Audrey Hepburn Born Audrey Kathleen Rustin in 1929 in Belgium, became one of the most beloved and enduring icons of Hollywood. Known for her elegance, charm, and timeless beauty, Hepburn captivated audiences with her unforgettable performances in films such as Breakfast at Tiffany's, Roman Holiday, and My Fair Lady. Her breakthrough role in Roman Holiday, 1953, earned her an Academy Award for Best Actress, launching her into stardom and solidifying her place as one of Hollywood's most revered actresses. Beyond her acting career, Hepburn's grace and humanitarian work made her a symbol of kindness and generosity worldwide. Hepburn's financial success paralleled her fame with her career spanning three decades of critically acclaimed films. At her peak, she commanded significant salaries for her roles, making her one of the highest paid actresses of her time. Her performance as Holly Golightly in Breakfast at Tiffany's remains one of the most iconic portrayals in cinema, contributing to her estimated net worth of around $55 million at the time of her death in 1993. Hepburn was not only a talented actress but also a fashion icon, known for her collaborations with designer Hubert de Givenchy, whose creations helped define her signature look. However, Audrey Hepburn's influence extended far beyond Hollywood. Later in life, she became a UNICEF goodwill ambassador, dedicating herself to humanitarian work in some of the world's poorest regions. Hepburn traveled extensively, advocating for children's rights and helping raise global awareness about hunger and poverty. Her dedication to this cause was a reflection of her compassionate nature, and she continued this work until her death in 1993 from cancer. Despite her struggles in her personal life, including two divorces and health issues, Hepburn's legacy is one of grace, compassion, and enduring influence, both in film and in her philanthropic efforts. Audrey Hepburn's enduring appeal is rooted not just in her beauty and talent, but also in her kindness and humility. Even as she achieved global fame, she remained deeply committed to helping others, using her platform for good. 
Her legacy as both an actress and humanitarian continues to inspire new generations, making her not just a Hollywood star, but a global icon of compassion and timeless elegance. Doris Day Doris Day, born Doris Marianne Kappelhoff in 1922, was one of Hollywood's brightest stars during the 1950s and 1960s. Known for her sunny persona, vibrant singing voice, and wholesome image, she became a symbol of American optimism and charm. Day began her career as a big band singer in the late 1930s, but it was her transition to film in the 1940s that truly cemented her place in Hollywood history. Her breakout role came in Romance on the High Seas, 1948, and from there, she starred in a series of hit musicals, comedies, and dramas, including Calamity Jane, Pillow Talk, and The Man Who Knew Too Much. With her relatable girl-next-door appeal, Doris Day quickly became one of the most beloved actresses of her time. At the height of her career, Doris Day was not only a box office queen, but also one of the highest-paid actresses in Hollywood. Her signature song, Que Sera Sera, Whatever Will Be Will Be, became synonymous with her light-hearted, carefree screen image. By the late 1960s, Day had amassed a fortune of over $20 million, a staggering sum at the time. However, her financial journey was marred by tragedy. After the death of her third husband, Martin Melcher, in 1968, Day discovered that he and his business manager had squandered her life savings, leaving her nearly bankrupt. She later won a legal battle to recover $6 million, which would be worth around $30 million today. Despite these setbacks, Doris Day remained resilient and continued working to rebuild her finances. She starred in The Doris Day Show, which ran from 1968 to 1973, helping her regain stability. Day's business acumen extended beyond her on-screen career as she invested in real estate and even ventured into the hotel industry, which further bolstered her wealth. By the time she retired from public life, her estate was valued at over $200 million, thanks in large part to her real estate investments and careful financial management. Beyond her film career, Doris Day was also known for her lifelong dedication to animal welfare. In 1978, she founded the Doris Day Animal Foundation, which remains active to this day. Her passion for helping animals was reflected in her later years, when she converted her sprawling seven-acre estate in Carmel, California, into a sanctuary for animals in need. Day passed away in 2019 at the age of 97, leaving behind a remarkable legacy not only as one of Hollywood's Golden Age stars, but also as a tireless advocate for animals. Her charm, talent, and philanthropy have cemented her place as an enduring icon in both entertainment and humanitarian circles. Marilyn Monroe Marilyn Monroe Born Norma Jean Mortensen in 1926, became one of the most iconic and enduring symbols of Hollywood glamour. Rising from a tumultuous childhood filled with foster homes and instability, Monroe transformed herself into a global superstar with a combination of beauty, charisma, and undeniable talent. She gained widespread attention with her performances in films such as Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, Some Like It Hot, and The Seven Year Itch, where her comedic timing and radiant screen presence captivated audiences worldwide. Monroe's signature blend of innocence and sensuality made her a beloved figure, cementing her status as a cultural icon. Monroe's financial success matched her fame, with her earnings steadily increasing as her career took off. By the mid-1950s, she had become one of the highest-paid actresses in Hollywood, earning around $3 million over the course of her career, which would be equivalent to tens of millions in today's currency. However, despite her financial gains, Monroe's personal life was filled with emotional turmoil and her lavish spending habits quickly diminished her wealth. She was known for her generosity, often showering her friends, family, and employees with extravagant gifts. 
At the time of her death in 1962, Monroe's estate was valued at around $800,000, a fortune that was greatly reduced by various debts and legal fees. Marilyn Monroe's legacy, however, extends far beyond her financial struggles. She was more than just a sex symbol. She was an ambitious actress and a savvy businesswoman. In 1955, she co-founded Marilyn Monroe Productions, a move that showcased her desire to gain more control over her career. Through this production company, Monroe sought more substantial and dramatic roles, and it was during this time that she starred in The Prince and The Showgirl and Bus Stop, displaying her versatility as an actress. Her talent and business acumen earned her critical acclaim and cemented her place as one of the greatest actresses of her time. Despite her tragic death at the age of 36, Monroe's influence endures, with her image remaining a powerful symbol of beauty, vulnerability, and strength. Her estate, which passed to her acting coach Lee Strasberg and other close associates, has continued to grow in value over the years, thanks to her enduring popularity. Marilyn Monroe left behind a legacy that transcends the screen. She remains one of the most recognized and beloved figures in pop culture, an icon of Hollywood's golden age, whose life and career continue to inspire fascination and admiration. Congratulations on completing one-third of this exploration journey. If you enjoyed this video, please comment one. Otherwise, comment zero. We will use this feedback to evaluate and improve our content. Thank you. Elizabeth Taylor Elizabeth Taylor, born in 1932 in London, England, was one of the most celebrated and iconic actresses in the history of Hollywood. Known for her stunning violet eyes and mesmerizing beauty, Taylor captivated audiences from a young age. She began her film career as a child star in National Velvet, 1944, but it was her transition into adult roles that solidified her status as a Hollywood legend. Taylor's performances in classics like Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, Cleopatra, and Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf showcased her immense talent and range, earning her two Academy Awards for Best Actress. Throughout her career, Taylor became known for her glamorous lifestyle, her dramatic love affairs, and her ability to command the screen with unforgettable performances. In addition to her illustrious film career, Taylor was a savvy businesswoman, particularly in the realm of fragrance and fashion. She was one of the first celebrities to launch her own perfume line, and her fragrances, including white diamonds, became incredibly successful, contributing significantly to her wealth. By the time of her death in 2011, her fortune was estimated to be between $600 million and $1 billion, making her one of the richest actresses in history. Her role in Cleopatra, 1963, was particularly notable, not only for its extravagant production, but for Taylor's record-breaking salary of $1 million, a sum that was unprecedented for an actress at the time. Taylor's business acumen and financial success were as remarkable as her acting career, allowing her to maintain a life of luxury while also leaving a lasting legacy. However, Elizabeth Taylor's influence went far beyond Hollywood and business. She was a pioneer in advocating for social causes, most notably in her fight against HIV AIDS. After losing several friends to the disease in the 1980s, Taylor became one of the first major celebrities to use her platform to raise awareness and funds for AIDS research. She founded the Elizabeth Taylor AIDS Foundation and helped raise over $270 million for the cause, making her as much of a humanitarian as she was a film star. Her efforts in the fight against AIDS earned her immense respect and admiration, and she continued her activism until her death. Elizabeth Taylor passed away in 2011 at the age of 79 from congestive heart failure. Surrounded by her children and grandchildren, she left behind not only a vast fortune, but an indelible legacy as one of the greatest actresses of all time. Her beauty, talent, and compassion made her a beloved figure in both Hollywood and the world of philanthropy. 
Taylor's life was filled with drama, love, and success, making her one of the most unforgettable figures in the history of cinema. Katherine Hepburn Katherine Hepburn, born in 1907 in Hartford, Connecticut, is widely regarded as one of the greatest actresses in the history of American cinema. Known for her sharp wit, fierce independence, and strong will, Hepburn defied the traditional norms of Hollywood, forging a career that spanned over six decades. She won an unprecedented four Academy Awards for Best Actress, with iconic performances in films such as The Philadelphia Story, The African Queen, On Golden Pond, and Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. Her acting style was characterized by her commanding presence, emotional depth, and the strength of the characters she portrayed, which resonated with audiences for generations. Financially, Hepburn achieved tremendous success throughout her career. By the 1940s, she was commanding high salaries for her work, becoming one of the highest paid actresses of her time. Unlike many of her contemporaries, Hepburn was known for living a relatively modest life, avoiding the extravagant lifestyle often associated with Hollywood stars. She invested wisely, amassing a fortune that, at the time of her death in 2003, was estimated to be around $30 million. Much of her wealth came from her long and successful acting career, which included roles in stage, television, and film. She also made smart real estate investments, with her prized waterfront estate in Connecticut, serving as a symbol of her personal and financial success. Beyond her financial achievements, Catherine Hepburn's legacy extended into her personal life, where she remained fiercely independent and unapologetically herself. She famously shunned the traditional Hollywood studio system, opting to choose her own roles and projects, often working with directors and co-stars she respected, such as Spencer Tracy, with whom she shared a legendary on-screen and off-screen partnership. Hepburn's relationship with Tracy was one of Hollywood's most famous, marked by their undeniable chemistry in films like Adam's Rib and Pat and Mike. Though they never married, their bond became an iconic chapter in Hollywood history. Catherine Hepburn passed away in 2003 at the age of 96, leaving behind a legacy that continues to inspire both audiences and actors alike. Her Connecticut estate, which had been in her family for decades, was sold after her death, with proceeds benefiting her loved ones and various charitable causes. Known for her philanthropic spirit, Hepburn was also a supporter of education and the arts, making provisions in her will for her family, friends, and selected charities. Hepburn's enduring appeal lies not only in her incredible body of work, but also in her trailblazing spirit, which helped redefine what it meant to be a woman in Hollywood. Her strength, intelligence, and determination set her apart, and her legacy as a pioneering actress remains unmatched. Bette Davis Betta Davis, born Ruth Elizabeth Davis in 1908 in Lowell, Massachusetts, was one of the most formidable and talented actresses of Hollywood's golden age. Renowned for her intense acting style, expressive eyes, and willingness to take on challenging, often unsympathetic roles, Davis redefined the portrayal of women on screen. Her career spanned more than five decades, with iconic performances in films such as All About Eve, Jezebel, Dark Victory, and Whatever Happened to Baby Jane. Known for her determination and fearlessness, Davis fought for better roles and higher standards for women in Hollywood, often clashing with studios and directors to get the recognition she deserved. Financially, Bette Davis achieved considerable success, becoming one of the highest paid actresses of her era. By the 1930s, she was earning significant salaries for her work, thanks to her bold choice of roles and her ability to captivate audiences. Her performance in Jezebel, 1938, earned her the first of two Academy Awards for Best Actress, and her career continued to flourish with a string of critically acclaimed films. Davis's commitment to her craft often led her to take on roles that others might have avoided, but this risk-taking approach cemented her reputation as one of Hollywood's most versatile and fearless performers. By the time of her death in 1989, 
Davis had accumulated a net worth estimated at $2.5 million, a significant sum given her long and storied career. Despite her professional success, Bette Davis's personal life was marked by tumult and difficulty. She endured four marriages, all of which ended in divorce, and faced strained relationships with her children, particularly her daughter B.D. Hyman, who later wrote a controversial memoir about their troubled relationship. Davis also faced significant health challenges later in life, including breast cancer and a debilitating stroke. However, these personal struggles did little to diminish her spirit. Even in her later years, Davis continued to act and remained as sharp and outspoken as ever, maintaining her status as a Hollywood legend. Bette Davis passed away in 1989 at the age of 81, leaving behind a legacy as one of the most influential actresses in cinematic history. She was a trailblazer who paved the way for future generations of women in Hollywood, not only by demanding better roles, but also by proving that actresses could succeed without relying on traditional notions of beauty or likability. Davis's career was a testament to her resilience, talent, and unwavering dedication to her craft. Her influence is still felt today, and she is remembered as one of the most groundbreaking and powerful actresses to ever grace the silver screen. Ingrid Bergman Ingrid Bergman, born in 1915 in Stockholm, Sweden, became one of the most acclaimed actresses in the history of cinema, known for her luminous beauty, remarkable talent, and natural acting style. She captivated audiences in both Europe and Hollywood with her compelling performances in films such as Casablanca, Notorious, and Gaslight, the latter of which earned her the first of three Academy Awards. Bergman's elegance and emotional depth made her a favorite of directors like Alfred Hitchcock, with whom she collaborated on several notable films. Her ability to embody complex, multidimensional characters set her apart from her peers, and she quickly rose to international stardom. Bergman's financial success mirrored her cinematic achievements. During her Hollywood career, she became one of the highest-paid actresses of her time, commanding significant salaries for her roles. By the time she reached her peak in the 1940s, she was earning a substantial income, which contributed to her financial stability throughout her life. However, her decision to return to Europe and work with director Roberto Rossellini in the early 1950s, including their controversial personal relationship, led to a temporary setback in her Hollywood career. Despite the scandal that followed her affair and subsequent marriage to Rossellini, Bergman's immense talent allowed her to stage a powerful comeback. Her performance in Anastasia, 1956, won her a second Academy Award, and she continued to build her legacy in both American and European cinema. Ingrid Bergman's life was not without personal challenges. Her affair with Rossellini, which resulted in a highly publicized divorce from her first husband, made her a controversial figure in Hollywood. However, Bergman's resilience and dedication to her craft helped her weather the storm. She had three children with Rossellini, including Isabella Rossellini, who would go on to become a famous actress and model in her own right. Despite these personal struggles, Bergman's career flourished once again in the 1960s and 1970s, culminating in a third Academy Award for her role in Murder on the Orient Express, 1974. She remained active in film and television until her death. Ingrid Bergman passed away in 1982 at the age of 67 after a long battle with breast cancer. She left behind a remarkable legacy as one of the greatest actresses in film history, with a career that spanned five decades and included some of the most iconic performances ever seen on screen. Bergman's combination of beauty, grace, and raw emotional power made her a unique force in cinema, and her influence on the art of acting remains profound. Her ability to navigate both personal and professional challenges with resilience and dignity only added to her legendary status. Today, she is remembered as one of the most influential and beloved figures in the world of film. Charlie Chaplin Charlie Chaplin, 
Born Charles Spencer Chaplin in 1889 in London, England, became one of the most influential figures in the history of cinema. Best known for his iconic character, The Tramp, Chaplin's unique blend of physical comedy, emotional depth, and social commentary revolutionized silent film. His rise to fame began in the early 1910s when he signed with Keystone Studios and quickly became the most popular and highly paid actor in the world. With films such as The Kid, City Lights, and Modern Times, Chaplin created timeless masterpieces that blended humor with poignant reflections on the human condition. His ability to convey complex emotions without dialogue made him a global phenomenon, and his work continues to influence generations of filmmakers. Financially, Chaplin was one of the wealthiest and most powerful men in Hollywood during his time. In 1914, just a few years into his career, he secured a contract with SNA Studios for $10,000, a staggering amount at the time. His ability to negotiate lucrative contracts continued throughout his career, with a landmark $670,000 deal with Mutual Film Corporation in 1916, which is equivalent to millions in today's money. Beyond acting, Chaplin was a pioneering director, producer, and composer, which allowed him to retain creative control over his films and maximize his earnings. He co-founded United Artists in 1919, along with Mary Pickford, Douglas Fairbanks, and D.W. Griffith, which gave him unprecedented artistic freedom and financial independence. By the time he retired, Chaplin's net worth was estimated to be in the tens of millions of dollars. However, Chaplin's personal life was as dramatic as his films. He faced multiple controversies, including his political views and relationships with much younger women, which led to significant challenges in his later years. In the 1950s, amid accusations of communist sympathies during the McCarthy era, Chaplin was effectively exiled from the United States, choosing to live in Switzerland for the rest of his life. Despite these setbacks, he continued to make films, including the critically acclaimed Limelight, 1952, and received numerous honors for his contributions to cinema, including an honorary Academy Award in 1972. Charlie Chaplin passed away in 1977 at the age of 88, leaving behind an extraordinary legacy as one of the most innovative and beloved figures in film history. His unique style of comedy, infused with social consciousness and emotional depth, transformed the landscape of cinema and created a universal language of laughter and empathy. Even after his death, Chaplin's work continues to be celebrated for its artistry and humanism, ensuring his place as one of the greatest filmmakers and entertainers of all time. His ability to craft films that were both humorous and deeply moving remains unmatched, and his influence on cinema is enduring. Cary Grant Cary Grant, born Archibald Alexander Leach in 1904 in Bristol, England, became one of Hollywood's most beloved and enduring leading men. Known for his effortless charm, wit, and debonair style, Grant defined the sophisticated romantic hero of the mid-20th century. His journey to stardom began after he moved to the United States in the 1920s, working as a vaudeville performer before transitioning to film. Grant's breakout role came in She Done Him Wrong, 1933, starring opposite Mae West, but it was his work in classic comedies and thrillers like Bringing Up Baby, His Girl Friday, North by Northwest, and To Catch a Thief that solidified him as one of Hollywood's most iconic stars. With his impeccable comedic timing, smooth demeanor, and striking good looks, Grant became a symbol of elegance and sophistication in American cinema. Financially, Cary Grant was one of the first major actors to take control of his own career, breaking free from the restrictive studio system. Unlike many stars of his time, Grant refused to sign long-term contracts, opting instead to work as a freelance actor. This bold move allowed him to negotiate some of the highest salaries in the industry, often earning up to $300,000 per film, a significant amount at the time. Additionally, 
Grant took a percentage of the gross profits for many of his films, ensuring a steady income even years after their release. His financial acumen extended beyond acting. He invested wisely in real estate and business ventures, accumulating a net worth of around $60 million by the time of his death, a figure equivalent to over $130 million today. Cary Grant's personal life was as fascinating as his film career. Known for his immaculate public image, Grant was married five times and had one daughter, Jennifer Grant, with his fourth wife, actress Diane Cannon. Despite his success and fame, he preferred a more private and reserved lifestyle compared to many of his Hollywood peers. He retired from acting in 1966 at the age of 62 after starring in Walk, Don't Run. Though he stepped away from the screen, Grant remained a prominent figure in business and served on the board of several major corporations, including MGM and Fabergé. Grant passed away in 1986 at the age of 82 after suffering a stroke. His death marked the end of an era, but his legacy as one of Hollywood's most iconic leading men endures. Known for his flawless screen presence and sophisticated persona, Cary Grant's influence on the film industry remains profound. His unique combination of humor, grace, and charisma made him a favorite among audiences and filmmakers alike. Today, he is remembered not only for his timeless roles in some of the greatest films ever made, but also for his pioneering approach to controlling his career and finances in an industry dominated by studios. Spencer Tracy Spencer Tracy, born in 1900 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, is widely regarded as one of the most skilled and versatile actors of Hollywood's golden age. Known for his naturalistic acting style, Tracy brought a rare authenticity to his roles, making him a beloved and respected figure in cinema. Over a career that spanned more than four decades, Tracy starred in iconic films such as Captain's Courageous, Boy's Town, Inherit the Wind, Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, and Father of the Bride. His performances earned him critical acclaim, and he became the first actor to win two consecutive Academy Awards for Best Actor for Captain's Courageous, 1937, and Boy's Town, 1938. Tracy's ability to portray ordinary men with extraordinary depth made him a favorite among audiences and critics alike. Financially, Spencer Tracy's career was marked by significant success. By the 1940s, he was one of the highest paid actors in Hollywood, commanding salaries that reflected his star power and box office appeal. For his role in Father of the Bride, 1950, he earned $300,000, a significant sum for that era. His financial success continued throughout his career, and at the time of his death, his estate was valued at approximately $50 million, adjusted for inflation. Tracy's long-term collaboration with MGM, which produced many of his most memorable films, was a key factor in his financial stability and his work ethic ensured that he remained one of Hollywood's most sought-after talents for decades. One of the defining aspects of Spencer Tracy's career was his legendary on-screen partnership with Katharine Hepburn, with whom he made nine films. Their undeniable chemistry made them one of Hollywood's most beloved duos, and their off-screen romance became the stuff of Hollywood legend, though they never married. Despite their personal relationship, Tracy remained married to his wife, Louise Treadwell, for his entire life, though they were estranged for many years. Tracy was known for his reserved and private nature, preferring to keep his personal life out of the public eye, and his relationship with Hepburn was kept discreet for much of their time together. Spencer Tracy passed away in 1967 at the age of 67, just 17 days after completing his final film, Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, where he delivered one of the most memorable performances of his career. His death marked the end of an era, but his legacy as one of the finest actors in film history lives on. Tracy's ability to bring humanity and depth to every role, combined with his groundbreaking collaborations with Hepburn, cemented his place as a true icon of the screen. Known for his dedication to his craft, 
Tracy remains a towering figure in the annals of Hollywood, respected for both his talent and his integrity. Clark Gable Clark Gable, born William. Clark Gable in 1901 in Cadiz, Ohio, became one of Hollywood's most iconic leading men, often referred to as the King of Hollywood. Known for his rugged charm, powerful screen presence, and signature smile, Gable captivated audiences in some of the most beloved films of the golden age of Hollywood. His breakthrough role came in It Happened One Night, 1934, for which he won his first and only Academy Award for Best Actor. However, it was his portrayal of Rhett Butler in the epic Gone with the Wind, 1939, that solidified Gable's place as a legend in cinema history. With his magnetic performances in films such as Mutiny on the Bounty and The Misfits, Gable became synonymous with the classic image of a Hollywood leading man, confident, charismatic, and commanding. Financially, Clark Gable was one of the most successful actors of his time. By the mid-1930s, Gable was commanding top-tier salaries, earning up to $7,500 per week at the height of his career. His role in Gone with the Wind earned him $120,000, a staggering sum in the late 1930s, reflecting both his immense popularity and the scale of the production. Gable's box office appeal remained strong throughout his career, and he maintained his status as a top-earning actor well into the 1940s and 1950s. His financial savvy extended to real estate investments and various business ventures, helping him accumulate a fortune that was estimated to be around $100 million in today's currency by the time of his death. Despite his professional success, Gable's personal life was marked by both triumphs and tragedies. He was married five times, with his third wife, actress Carol Lombard, being the love of his life. Their marriage was tragically cut short when Lombard died in a plane crash in 1942, a loss that deeply affected Gable for the rest of his life. Gable also served in World War II as a member of the U.S. Army Air Corps, earning the respect of both his fellow soldiers and his fans for his patriotism and bravery. After the war, Gable returned to Hollywood and continued to star in major films, but he never fully recovered from Lombard's death. Clark Gable passed away in 1960 at the age of 59, shortly after completing his final film, The Misfits, in which he starred alongside Marilyn Monroe. His death marked the end of an era, but Gable's legacy as the King of Hollywood endures. He remains a symbol of classic Hollywood masculinity and star power, admired for his ability to portray both tough, rugged characters and romantic leads with equal charm and depth. Gable's contribution to cinema, particularly through timeless performances like Rhett Butler, continues to resonate with audiences, cementing his place as one of the greatest actors in film history. James Stewart James Stewart Born James Maitland Stewart in 1908 in Indiana, Pennsylvania, became one of the most beloved and respected actors of Hollywood's golden age. Known for his everyman appeal, distinctive voice, and genuine warmth, Stewart brought a relatable sincerity to the screen that resonated with audiences for decades. His breakthrough came in the late 1930s with films like Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, 1939, where his portrayal of an idealistic senator earned him his first Academy Award nomination. However, it was his role in The Philadelphia Story, 1940, that won him his first and only Academy Award for Best Actor. Stewart went on to deliver unforgettable performances in classics such as It's a Wonderful Life, Rear Window, Vertigo, and The Man Who Shot Liberty Valance, solidifying his place as one of cinema's greatest actors. Financially, James Stewart was highly successful throughout his career. As a versatile actor who worked in a wide range of genres, from dramas and thrillers to comedies and westerns, Stewart commanded substantial salaries for his work. After World War II, where he served as a bomber pilot in the U.S. Air Force and earned the rank of Brigadier General, Stewart returned to Hollywood with a new contract model that transformed how actors were compensated. 
Instead of a flat salary, he negotiated a percentage of the box office profits, making him one of the first actors to adopt this approach. This savvy business move allowed Stewart to earn a substantial income from successful films like Harvey, 1950, and Winchester, 73, 1950, boosting his financial standing significantly. At the time of his death in 1997, Stewart's net worth was estimated to be around $60 million, a testament to his long and lucrative career. Beyond his financial success, James Stewart was known for his dedication to family and country. He was married to Gloria Hattrick McLean for 45 years until her death in 1994, and they raised two sons, one of whom tragically died in the Vietnam War. Stewart's patriotism was a significant part of his identity. He was one of the first Hollywood stars to enlist during World War II, and his military service earned him several honors, including the Distinguished Flying Cross. Despite his fame, Stewart remained down-to-earth and humble, often shunning the glitz and glamour of Hollywood in favor of a quieter life with his family. James Stewart passed away in 1997 at the age of 89, leaving behind a legacy as one of the most beloved actors in film history. His ability to convey vulnerability, strength, and integrity made him a unique figure in Hollywood and his performances continue to resonate with audiences today. Stewart's portrayal of George Bailey in It's a Wonderful Life remains one of the most iconic and heartwarming roles in cinema, symbolizing the impact of his entire career. Known for his kindness, humility, and dedication to his craft, Stewart is remembered not only as a great actor, but as a true American icon, whose work and legacy continue to inspire new generations. Gary Cooper. Gary Cooper, born Frank James Cooper, in 1901 in Helena, Montana, became one of Hollywood's most enduring and iconic actors, known for his understated style, rugged good looks, and quiet strength. Cooper's rise to fame began in the late 1920s during the silent film era. But his transition to talkies solidified his place as one of Hollywood's top leading men. He became synonymous with the archetypal American hero, playing roles that embodied integrity, humility, and quiet resolve. His performances in films like High Noon, Sergeant York, Mr. Deeds Goes to Town, and The Pride of the Yankees became defining moments in American cinema. Cooper's authenticity and ability to convey deep emotion with minimal dialogue made him one of the most respected and admired actors of his time. Financially, Gary Cooper achieved significant success throughout his career, making him one of the highest paid actors in Hollywood. By the 1930s, he was commanding top salaries for his work, reflecting his status as one of the industry's most bankable stars. His portrayal of Sergeant Alvin York in Sergeant York, 1941, earned him his first Academy Award for Best Actor and solidified his position as one of the top actors of his generation. In the 1950s, Cooper's iconic role in High Noon, 1952, where he played a sheriff facing danger alone, won him his second Academy Award and became one of his most celebrated performances. Thanks to his long career and smart investments, Cooper's net worth at the time of his death was estimated to be around $100 million in today's currency. In his personal life, Cooper was known for his down-to-earth demeanor, mirroring the characters he played on screen. Though he lived the life of a Hollywood star, he never fully embraced the glamour and excess of the industry, preferring a more private lifestyle. He was married to socialite Veronica Rocky Balfi for most of his adult life, and together they had one daughter. However, like many stars of his era, Cooper faced personal challenges, including affairs with famous actresses like Patricia Neal, which were highly publicized. Despite these struggles, Cooper remained a beloved figure in Hollywood, respected for his professionalism and humility. Gary Cooper passed away in 1961 at the age of 60 after a battle with cancer. His death marked the loss of one of Hollywood's most iconic and enduring stars. 
Cooper's legacy as a quintessential American hero continues to resonate with audiences, and his performances, particularly in High Noon and Sergeant York, remain some of the most admired in film history. He was posthumously awarded an Honorary Academy Award in 1961, recognizing his tremendous contributions to cinema. Known for his authenticity, strength, and quiet dignity, Gary Cooper left an indelible mark on Hollywood, and his influence is still felt in the film industry today. Thank you all for being among those who stayed till the end of the video. Comment, too, so we can see you. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the Famous People channel for more insightful content. We appreciate your participation and look forward to sharing more engaging stories with you in our upcoming videos. Goodbye.